Okay, the directions here say the point negative 2, 3 lies on the terminal side of theta in standard position. On the exact values of the six trig functions, that is sine, cosine, tangent, and of course cosecant, secant, cotangent. Okay? So that's what we're going to find here. The first thing I want to do with these types of problems is draw a picture of the angle. Okay, anytime I can draw a picture, it's going to help me out. Alright, so let's draw that picture. Just a quick sketch. There's the point negative 2, 3. Okay, that point lies on the terminal side of the angle. That is the terminal side in standard position. You're going to start your angle here, it's going to rotate this way. And there's my angle theta in standard position. Initial side, terminal side. Okay. So I need to find all six trig function values. I'm going to go ahead and write those down. exact value of all of those. Right, so we have definitions for these, right? The sine of theta is defined in the xy plane as y over r. The cosine of theta is defined as x over r, and the tangent, of course, is y over x. Alright? Easy problem. I already have x and y, right? That's x, that's y, all the needs are, and I'm almost done. Okay, you notice I didn't write the definitions for these. There are definitions that are, of course, reciprocals. But all I like to do is I find these three, and then find these, I just take the reciprocal. I'm going to flip these fractions around. All right? So we'll get there in a sec. First thing we need to do is find r, so I can get these two values. Uh, so r is the distance from here to here. Remember that? The distance from here to here. And we can get that from the Pythagorean theorem. r is root x squared plus root y squared. Okay, move that up a little bit. So, in this case, x is negative 2, y is 3, r is the square root of 4 plus 9, which is 13. Okay? So x, negative 2, y, 3, r, root 13, now I just plug it into my definitions and I'll be done. y equals 3 over root 13. Up. I shouldn't say done, almost done. I gotta rationalize that denominator. Alright? So in order to rationalize, I need a little more room. I gotta multiply by root 13 over root 13. Root 13 times root 13. 13, 3 root 13. Is just 3 times root 13. Okay, that's the sine of theta, the, the ratio of y to r of this angle. Alright? Um, that's the exact value, that word, exact value. You could write a decimal value for that, but they're asking for exact, that's the exact value. Okay? Um, cosine of theta, x over r. Negative 2 over root 13. Root 13 times root 13, 13, negative 2 times root 13 is negative 2 times root 13. That's my answer for cosine. And now for the tangent, that one's easy. Y over x, y over x, 3 has negative. Okay? You'll notice the sine is positive, which it always is in the second quadrant. Cosine is negative, which it always is in the second quadrant. And tangent is also negative. Okay? So those algebraic signs should make sense. Negative, negative, sine being positive. All right? So next, three more values. Cosecant, secant, and the cotangent. So I need some more rooms. I'm going to erase my picture. And write them right here. Okay, find the sine, I'm sorry, find the cosecant, 
I want the reciprocal of the sine. That's how we define it. There's a definition R over Y. I could use that. But I'm just going to flip this guy around. Okay, so remember the first, the first answer to sine theta was 3 over root 13. So I'm going to use that. Root 13 over 3. Why didn't I take my simplified sine answer? Because if I flip that guy around and I got the root on the bottom, I got to go through the whole process of rationalizing the denominator. And I want to do that all over again. So I'm going to look at this that I had for sine, that answer, and flip that guy around. I'll do the same with the cosine. And tangency. Okay, so there's your answer. Those are the six. Uh, trig function values for an angle that lies on the, his terminal side lies with that point. All right.